Hello, and welcome to the Spring 2017 Online Graduate Practicum Forum. I am Jeff Hernandez, a graduate student at Texas State University, currently pursuing an interdisciplinary master's degree with a concentration in Occupational, Workforce, and Leadership Studies. I'm also an officer in the United States Army. The purpose of my practicum is to develop and implement a comprehensive leadership development program that focuses on the benefits of transformational leadership practices for implementing organizational changes based upon lessons learned at the United States Army's National Training Center. My organization was the operations group at the National Training Center. This organization is responsible for observing, coaching, and training Army Brigade combat teams in the execution of simulated combat operations over a 21-day period. For my practicum, I worked with the commander of operations group Colonel Ross Kaufman, and several team leads, Lieutenant Colonel William Sponsor, my site supervisor, and Lieutenant Colonel Brent Coriel, to gain insight into the coaching and training of brigade and battalion level commanders. I achieved my practicum goals by engaging in a variety of practicum activities centered on planned events associated with rotational unit training activities to accomplish the four listed learning objectives. My need for the practicum is that it allowed me to work with other leaders to observe and capture best practices for teaching, coaching, and mentoring senior Army leaders in a dynamic training environment. Because of this experience, I have a better understanding on the effectiveness of applying transformational leadership skills, values, and attributes for use in today's rapidly changing Army environment. It also provided me with the requisite knowledge to observe and understand the necessary traits to be a successful commander when I am selected by the Army to lead a battalion of approximately 1,000 soldiers. The month of January was a challenging one for me on both a personal and professional level. I wrecked my car due to black ice on New Year's Eve, endured a miserable rotation with respect to the elements, and realized how much I missed my family. With the encouragement of my loving wife Norma, I did what I always do. I stopped feeling sorry for myself, got back in the saddle, and charged my way through each obstacle I confronted. By focusing my efforts on those things I can control, I was also able to focus on where I want to be a few years from now. As Colonel Kaufman told me when I interviewed him, you're doing great things with respect to your job, but you're also going beyond. Don't lose sight of your goals as they are what motivates you, but also don't forget about how important your family is. Make sure you take time to spend with them. These words of encouragement, coupled with those of my wife, allowed me to focus on positive things that got me through the month. I am confident that the strength I demonstrated over the month of January no doubt made a good impression on my boss and practicing supervisor, Lieutenant Colonel Sponsor. Sometimes the strength within us just needs to be unleashed with the encouragement of others. I am fortunate that was the case for me. I was told that I was going to switch jobs during the February rotation rather than in the May-June time frame. One of my peers recognized that I was experiencing some hesitation about the decision and stated very matter-of-factly, Jeff, you're the best logistician we've had on the Bronco team in years. On top of that, you're doing your practicum stuff. I can't think of anyone else in operations group that has volunteered to do an extra 120 hours of work like you have. Keep doing great things and you're going to go far. That was the little bit of reinforcement I needed to remain focused on my job and practicum activities. At the end of the practicum, a leadership opportunity arose while I was participating in the 10th annual Shelby Bash, a celebration of car enthusiasts sponsored by Team Shelby. The group is dedicated to honoring and preserving the legacy of Carol Shelby, an automotive racer, team leader, designer, and philanthropist. As part of the bash, there was a scavenger hunt. I was selected by one team of strangers to be their leader. Cognizant that I was dealing with a wide variety of personalities, I quickly devised a plan of action for the team utilizing several of the transformational leadership techniques I've studied, as well as those I'd observed during my practicum. I chose to inspire my team to have fun as we traveled in and around the Las Vegas area, completing our six tasks. I exercised patience, was constantly motivating them to work together, and giving them a lot of high fives. In the end, many of them came up to me and thanked me for how I'd led the team. For me, it was a sort of validation that given the opportunity to lead a bunch of strangers, I succeeded. My first literature highlight focuses on the article, Throwing Your Boots Over the Wire, by Steve Leonard. 
The title of this article comes from a long-standing tradition of soldiers throwing their boots over a telephone wire when they leave the army. Much of what Leonard covers in the article was applicable to two of my learning objectives and amplified some of the points made by Colonel Kaufman during my interview with him. My second literature highlight focuses on the article In Praise of the Incomplete Leader by Ancona Malone et al., which I read for a professional development session with Colonel Kaufman in February. It was a very interesting read as the authors state that it's time to end the myth of the complete leader, the flawless person at the top who's got it all figured out. In fact, the sooner leaders stop trying to be all things to all people, the better off their organizations will be. I especially liked hearing some of my peers' perspectives as well as those of Colonel Kaufman. As in my previous engagements with him, I came away convinced that he is a transformational leader in the Army that I would like to emulate. This article is a great read for all types of organizations, and I intend to use it someday in the future. My final literature highlight is the book, A Passion of Le for Leadership, Lessons on Change and Reform from 50 Years of Public Service, by former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. In this book, Secretary Gates shares the lessons he learned about organizational change and reform from his vast experience of leading both public sector and governmental organizations. He states that the purpose of the book is about people and how to lead them where they often don't want to go. It is about how a leader can make an institution better, both for those who work there and for those they serve. It is about improving people's lives. Secretary Gates's insights are easily identifiable with other writings on transformational leadership and provide current and future leaders with many examples of how to lead change in their organizations. One of my favorite quotes from the book is, to be successful agents of change, of reform, leaders not only must be able to envision a new way forward, but also must be practical with the skill to build broad support and implement their vision. My practicum experience was to develop the requisite skills to be an outstanding future battalion commander. For my strength reflection, I focused on the guiding question, what knowledge and or skills did you develop from your practicum relevant to where you want to go in your career? One of my practicum activities was to interview Colonel Kaufman. One of the insights he shared with me that I had not heard before is that of understanding your position as a leader. Often leaders perceive themselves as being above everyone else in their organization, i.e. being at the top of the pyramid. While that is true with respect to hierarchy, he challenged me to view it from a different perspective, that of being on the ground with the weight of the pyramid bearing down on your, on your shoulders, i.e. Atlas holding the earth up. I believe this perspective is relevant to the Army with the amount of responsibility that is placed on commanders. It is even more applicable when we lead soldiers into combat situations. The weight of command can be a heavy one, but it is what we have signed up to do as part of our profession. The majority of my practicum was based on observing senior army leaders and their units operating under the stresses of a simulated combat environment. For my weakness reflection, I focused on the guiding question, what did you have the most difficulty with in performing your practicum? One of the many reasons that the National Training Center is so challenging for units is that the weather is often unpredictable in the winter. That was the case during January as we experienced lingering cold, high winds in excess of 40 miles per hour, and torrential rains. On a personal level, it had a negative effect on my morale. On a professional level, I observed it hamper the unit we were training. They were sometimes unmotivated to execute their missions with the effort we would normally expect. This in turn impacted my motivation level to execute my normal work duties because I felt like they were not listening to the recommendations I was making to help them learn and improve. Fortunately, my practicum activities were not affected and actually provided me with the necessary inspiration to remain motivated about the practicum experience and my job itself. Throughout the practicum, I had an opportunity to meet and interact with a number of senior leaders across the Army. For my opportunity reflection, I focused on the guiding question, how will your practicum experience maximize future professional opportunities? One of the leaders I had the opportunity to interact with was Brigadier General Rodney Fogg. I've been fortunate to build a relationship with him over the past seven years. He epitomizes servant leadership, which is one of the qualities of being a transformational leader and why I consider him one of my mentors. 
The opportunity to interact with him and several other leaders during a mid-rotation sustainment after action review, which was one of my practicum activities, provided me with an opportunity to build new professional relationships while strengthening existing ones. As I closed out my practicum activities, I reflected on the overall practicum experience and some of the events surrounding it. For my threat reflection, I focused on the guiding question from the weakness category. Under what circumstances did you fail to learn, develop? I pondered whether I had allowed the potential job change to affect the short-term future of my career. I recognized that I failed to adapt positively to the aftermath of the situation. I vented my frustration and disappointment to several of my teammates. While all were supportive of me, I couldn't help but wonder what I could have done differently during and after this situation. I'm usually quite good at controlling my emotions, but this was an exception. The further I explored it, I began to reflect on other times I've allowed my emotions to get the best of me. In every instance, I've grown stronger because I've used it as motivation to prove to myself and others, especially those who have doubted me, that I'm a strong and capable leader. This situation will be no different. My future career plans include promotion to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel later this year. Subsequently, I desire to be selected for Battalion Command, where I hope to lead the Regimental Support Squadron of the 3rd United States Cavalry Regiment at Fort Hood, Texas. If I am not selected to command, I plan to become a professor of military science for an Army ROTC program at a Texas university. I then plan to retire from the Army and enter the coaching profession at the high school level. Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope that you gained some insight into my practicum experience. Please follow the instructions on the screen to provide your honest and candid feedback. Goodbye and have a great day.